Hello, all our listeners here on Joy 1340 AM and 98.7 FM. I am Pastor Walter Owens, and I am looking at my co-host. You look a little bit warm. Your forehead is sweating. Is it because the snow is melting? What's going on with you? Man? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? I don't even know how to respond to that. <laughs> First of all, tell who I tell our audience who you are. That would help. I'm Pastor Charles Embry. I tell you, we're having a fun time in the studio. Amen, amen, amen. You know, that, that's so great. Our engineer, Sean, gave you a chance to regroup yourself, and you are still lost. You were blank over there for a minute. Yeah, I did, I did, I did. I'm back, I'm back. I'm back. How you doing, man? You okay? I'm doing great. Praise How about God. Hey, I'm, I'm glad to see some sunshine outside. So am I, yes. Woo. Thank you. Boy, this, this snow that we had here in Milwaukee this past weekend, Pretty rough, yes, pretty rough, yes. pretty I mean, rough. that song, he dropped a bomb on us. <laughs> he sure did. I mean, look out bad. Uh, well, well we gonna, we gonna, we're just going to sing this song, God give us praise and help in our time of need. Amen. Get us through this storm. Amen. You know, Pastor, I am looking forward to the show that we're going to have today right here on Focus 2020. You know, I have something I want to have you to go with me. In our meeting today, uh, in our discussion, you showed me something and we were discussing it. It was taken from the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 10 and verse 1 through 6. Because mm -hmm. after you read this, I got a question for our audience. Okay. Can you read that for us? Uh, yeah. Psalms chapter 10, verse 1 through 6. It says, Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thyself in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride does prosper, persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasts in his heart desires and blesses the, covet the covetous whom the Lord abhorred. The wicked through pride, through the pride of his countenance, will seek after God. Will not seek after God. God is not in his thoughts. Mm. His ways are always grievous. Thy judges are far above, out of sight, out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffs at them. He says in his heart, I shall not be moved. I shall never be in adversity. Wow, that's pretty deep. Then I got a question for you, Pastor, and our listeners today. Do you have the right to question God? You know, that is a very good question. We do have the right to question God when we have our hearts in the right condition. Okay, okay. And what I mean by that, because if we come to God in a heart that's not surrendered or submitted to the Lord, then we will come in the wrong manner. And our, and our lesson we, we found today is that at, at issues is not whether we should question God, but in what manner, for what reason we question him. So if you don't come to God in a proper manner to question him, then you come with aggression. Oh, okay, you okay, know, anger. Okay. okay, so that's a lot of times where we are going through things and we go to God and, uh, you know, I, I like when you said that we come to God with aggression. Yeah. So if I'm hearing you, Pastor, it sounds as you're telling, that, telling me and our listeners is that when we bring things upon ourselves or misfortunes have in our life, yes, we run to God right away. God help me through this here. You know, please God help me, help me, help me. Yes, but we haven't given anything to Him. Absolutely. You you know that's something you said because I was just thinking how a sinner man, you know, they say I don't believe in God, I don't believe in that Jesus stuff. You know, I heard many people tell me this. You know, through the years. But soon as you get in trouble, who you calling? Lord, help me. <laughs> you know, God saved my, my family member from dying. You know, they, they're about to die. God, if I promise you that if you do this for me, I'm, I'm going to get my life right. If, False if promises. Do, right. That, oh, I like that, Pastor. If you do this for me, yes, then I would get my life right. Yes. That's a false promise. Because in your heart, you know you ain't serious. You know, you only want God on the, like I said in one of my lessons I was teaching recently, they said we want God on our condition and on our terms. 
But when it comes to his condition, his requirements according to his word, I don't want to follow that God because that seems too difficult. That means I got to let go of some things I'm doing that I'm comfortable with, the things I'm familiar with. I got to let go of some people I'm hanging around because God requires excellency to come out of me, which is holiness and righteousness. But in order to, to get into that place, I got to change what I think. So in other words, that if, if I don't get what I want at the time I want it, then I'm going to question God and say it's his fault. Yes. That you didn't give me what I want. Yes. Yes. That's we blame it. God. We begin to blame God because he didn't answer the way I want him to answer. You know, it says to question God is not in self, it's self wrong. The prophet Habakkuk had questions for God concerning the timing and agency of the Lord's plan. Habakkuk, rather than being rebuked for his question, is patiently answered. And the prophet ends his book with a song of praise to the Lord. I like that because, you know, when you get your, your heart in the right place, when you question God about anything that's going on in your life, God will answer you. Sometimes he doesn't answer the way we want him to answer. Okay, okay that's where I was going. You know, come he doesn't answer what we want him to answer. He doesn't uh, uh, do what we want him to do, what we want him to do it. Sometimes we got to just be patient. The Bible tells us be still and know that I, I am God. God. Amen. Amen. You know, Pastor, I like that when you uh, use that il illustration is having patience. Yes. First of all, you know, uh, I, how can I say this here? I want our listeners to know that before you and I go before the throne of God. He already know what we're going to ask for. Yes, he does. And the thing is, how do we come to God? Do we come with a, a hardened heart? Uh, do we come with him with a humble heart? Or we come with him with a motive? You know, a lot of people come with motives. Come on, explain that. And you know what I mean by that? Because we come with hidden agendas. You know, I want to get God to bless me financially, mm -hmm. you know, but in the process, I'm a selfish hearted person. I'm stingy. You know, I'm not a giver. I'm not helping nobody else who have a need. It's all about me, what I want, you know, so your motive is wrong. What David says in Psalm 51, he says, a broken spirit, a contrite heart, you would not despise. Amen. Pastor, because, you know, this, this, uh, uh, is a confirmation which you read in Psalms 10 in verse 3. It says, yes. How the wicked boast of his heart desire. Yes. He blesses the greedy and renounce the Lord, the wicked, in his pride. Mm -hmm. Continence does not see God. God is in none of his thoughts. Yes. So if I, go ahead, go ahead. You got something. In the Amplified, it says it like this For the wicked man boasts, sings the praises of his own heart's desire. And the one greedy for gain curses and spurns, yes, renounces and despises the Lord. So my question again, do if I feel that way, do I have the right to question God? No, because your heart is not right. If okay. your heart is not right, you don't have the reason to question God for anything if you're not walking according to his word. You know, one thing the Bible tells us the steps of good men are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in your in his way. Yes, and sir. what God is talking about, that when you walk in the way I design and the plan I have for your life, I take pleasure in you. God gets pleasure in you when you walk in obedience. But if you not obey him, you cause his righteous indignation to rise against you. You know? Oh, that's good, because I saw something that over here in Hebrews 11 and 6. Yes. After King Saul had disobeyed God. Mm -hmm. King Saul had disobeyed God. His questions went unanswered. Yes. Let's, let's, go, let's, let's go there right quick, Pastor. If you got that, I want I want to go to Hebrews because that's that's six. something. Yeah. That's talking about without faith. Yes, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, go go ahead if you got that because that's really interesting. I want our listeners to understand what you just shared with us. If we disobey God, yes. we don't, I, I personally feel I don't have the right to go and question him about anything. No, because in Hebrews 11 and 6, it puts it like this. Uh -huh. I'm going to read it in the Amplified. Yes, sir. 
It says, but without faith, it is impossible to please and be satis satisfactory to him. For whoever will come near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he is the rewarder of those who earnestly mm. and diligently seek him out. Come on now, come on, come on. So when you come correct, then God said, okay, now I can, I can answer you. I can give you what you're looking for. I can bless you in the way you need to be blessed because you're seeking me in the right manner of heart. Oh, that's the key. That's the key. Coming to God with a clean and pure yes. heart. Yes. Being obedient to his yes. word. Yes, that's it. There's, 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 there's something that you showed me earlier, Pastor. Um, even we saw something in 1 Samuel 28 and 6. Yes. You know, that, that, that one verse, that one verse alone, 1 Samuel 28 and 6, so Saul dis disgusted himself and put on ordered clothing, and he went, wait a minute, is this the right word? 28 and 6. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. It says, and when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dream or hearing, nor by prophet. Yeah, that's the one, that's the one mm -hmm. I was looking for. That's the one I was looking for. Because there, there was a difference there. Yes. And he was wondering why, why, why wasn't God answering him the way he wanted answered? Why wasn't God doing what he said? God, I come to you and you ask, you told me, whatever I asked in your name, it shall be given unto me. Now here it is, which is true. But you're not giving it to me. No, but, but the thing is, <laughs> you said it too, you did. You did. Come on now. <laughs> now, I, here's what I'm thinking. Come on, okay, come on. For, come for on. Saul, right? God will answer you, okay? Uh -huh. But if, you, if you're in rebellion, you can't expect the answer from the Lord that you want from the Lord. So here's what happened. You know, in a, in a brief nutshell, Saul was given a stern order from the Lord to kill the Malachites and to destroy everything that they had. But he rebelled against God. He didn't obey God. He kept the king alive. He took the best of the cattle. He took the best of the spoils when God told him not to do that. So when, when the prophet came to him that you're going to lose your position now as king, and that's the thing that, that God showed me. He says, because of our rebellion, we cut off every promise God has for us. Oh, okay. So he okay. cut off the promises yes. God had intended for him to have for his life because he chose to disobey God, and that brings to the place of rebellion, and rebellion brings you to being stiff-necked, and not only stiff-necked, it brings you to a place of being an outcast, then it brings you back to fear. So fear, the fear will, will turn you from God into following your own plan and your own way of living and doing things the way you feel is the best way to go, which brings us to our lesson on last week, do not fear. It says, Isaiah 41 and 10, uh -huh. the Lord said, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be anxious. Look about, about you, for I am your God, and I will strengthen you, and surely I will help you, and surely I will hold you with my righteous right hand. So when the enemy does, he gets you to revert back to fear, and that fear is rebellion. It's stubbornness. It's getting to a place of darkness again. And then, and only that, the enemy neutralizes you. So when he neutralizes you, he, be, he causes you to become inactive for God. Amen. Amen, Pastor. I like that because the thing is, like you said, that fear. Yeah. First of all, when you was reading it, 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 it takes me over to, uh, uh, what is it, insecure question or a question from a hypocritical mm -hmm. heart or a yeah. different matter. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he reward those who honestly seek him. That's it. So, uh, if, if, if what you were sharing with our listeners, that God has already blessed us. Yes, yes. He has already blessed us. That's why I was saying earlier, uh, God said, anything that you ask in my name, it shall be given unto you. Right. Now, but the requirement, the requ there you go. The requirement you go. Come on, is come on. seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Oh, so if you're not seeking God, time out, time out, time out, time out. No, 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 no. I don't want all. I don't want to have to go through all of that. <laughs> There's no shortcuts to the kingdom. <laughs> Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't yeah. want to go through that. I want what I can get I want right, what I want now. right now. Right now. And I'm a microwave-minded yes. yes. person. I want it right now. 
and you said that I can have it. Now I'm coming and I'm going to question you. Why aren't you giving me what you said that you're going to give me? I got another another twist for you. Oh boy, here we go. Even sometimes when we are in the right right mindset and right condition and right manner to approach God and question God, God will not answer sometimes with the things that you want when you know you're not ready to receive it. Okay, okay. All right, I, I, I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. Because what? I'm glad it's not ready for it. Your mind not or your heart not ready to receive it. Okay, I like that. Instead yeah. of my mind, yeah. my heart your is heart, not ready. Got you, got you. So in other words, you're, you're sharing with our listeners this day, today. If we do go to God and we're going to question him, we have to go with him with a pure heart. Yes, heart. And that's pure one thing heart. I know about, about Christ because <laughs> I, as I was listening to you earlier, Pastor, you were saying that God will provide all our needs. He will give us what we ask of him if we keep his commandment, if we obey what he said, yes. if we trust and believe in his word yes. and not ours, yes. move us out of the way, all these things will be added unto us yes. from yes. his kingdom. Yes. But our big problem is it's about us it's and we want us. to boast. Yes. You know, uh, I, I was saying it, 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 it takes me about why do you think I heard you talk about fear. Is that the doubt? Is we, are we starting yeah. to doubt? Fear brings you to doubt mm -hmm. and unbelief. You know, it brings you to doubt, unbelief, and failure. And that's what God told me. He says many times that fear gets you to a place where you begin to become a failure in trusting and believing in God so you can get, revert back to the things that you're comfortable with, mm. your familiarity, you know, the things that you're, you're, from, you, you're used to doing, the place you used to be. And all this stuff, you know, and people you used to hang around. So you go back to the same thing that makes you comfortable. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. That makes a lot of sense. That makes a whole lot of sense, Pastor, is because we put ourselves, we put ourselves in this box. Yeah. We put ourselves blaming God for where we are. We're blaming God for the things that's going bad in our life. We're blaming others yes, on situations yes. that comes upon us. But you were saying in Isaiah 41 is that he did not give us the spirit of fear. Yes, yes. He was strengthening us during yes. our time of trouble. I want to show you something, Pastor. Go over to me right quick over to the book of Psalms. Yes. Psalms 66 and 18. This is very, this is very good. And I hope our listeners can grab a hold of this. And I hope they can focus on what we're saying and have a, a, a powerful vision, that 2020 vision. Look what it says over here in Psalms 66, 18. You there with me? Yeah. You know, the first thing it said, and he was what? It says, if I. Mine said, and he, okay. 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 Oh, right, right. Oh, man, help me, help me today. I'm so excited. You're right. If I regard iniquity in my heart, that's the first thing. Mm -hmm. If, if right. I, yes. if I. If I. So it's predicated on your, de your decision. Come on now, come on, come on. So if, it's, it's like, if, if I'm holding to something that's, that's not of God, and I'm trying to get an answer from God, God says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, he will not hear me. Mm -hmm. So I can't expect God to hear and answer me if I'm holding on to sin. Ooh. So he has attended to the voice of my prayer. Mm -hmm. That's it. Bless be God who has not turned away my prayer nor yeah. his mercy from me. Break that one down. Break that okay. Come on, break that it down. Says, but certainly God has heard me. He has given heed to my voice, to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be the God who has not rejected my prayer nor removed his mercy and loving kindness from being, from being as it always is with me. And the reason why, because when you come to God correct. God says, okay, I can bless you now. I can open up the windows of heaven for you have the blessings that you don't have enough room to receive because he heard your cry the moment before you uttered the word from your mouth. He knew your thoughts. He knew everything about you. And in the process, God says, okay, now I hear my voice. Now God says he has not turned away my prayer. See, he's not rejecting your prayer. He's receiving your prayer as a petition that he can answer and he can fix in your life whatever situation you're going through. If you come, if you come to him with a pure, with a pure heart, back heart. to the pure heart. So the main thing I, I'm learning today, then, is 
for me to have the right to question God. I have to come to him with a very clean yeah. and pure heart. Yes. David said, created me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. So when you recognize you out of order with God, he, he said, Lord, I'm crying out. I need you to create, create a clean heart. So is that why it says God is not uh, intimidated by questions? God invite us to enjoy close relationship with him? That's it. When we question God, it should be from a humble spirit and an open mind. That's it. We can question God, but we should not expect an answer unless we are genuinely in interested in his answer. Now, that's the, that's the good yes, point there. That's it. Great point. Right. I, I, whatever answer God gives you, are you going to receive it and accept it? Exactly. We got to. Why? You can't change God's mind. You can't put a requirement on God and expect him to do what you want to do when God is the one in control and he's the one that has the answers to your situation. And he, he knows the finality of your life. So why we do that all the time? Because of uh, the carnal nature. Always want to boast and, and um, come against God. You know, you don't want to submit. The Bible says the, the flesh cannot submit, neither can be, you know, because of sin. You know, when sin enters in, sin controls your thought life. And sin will begin to control your actions. And it's so important to recognize that I need the Lord in my life and I can't make it without him. So when I call to the Lord, I have faith and believe that he's going to answer me when I call upon him. I love that, Pastor. You know, you just said something uh, about our thought pattern. In other words, I have to renew my mind. Renew the mind. Cleanse my heart. Yes. Come with a humble spirit. Yes. And then once I do those things, then all those gifts, those blessings will be added unto me. Yes. Absolutely. Hey, man. Hey, That's man. awesome. Oh, that. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, <laughs> hey, man. I got, I got one right today. <laughs> you know, Pastor, I just love this here, and I just pray that our listeners receive something from that. If you do have, and if you do or want to question God, make sure you do it with a pure heart. Yes. Pastor, I just want to say something right quick, and I want you to close this out. I want to send uh, prayers out to uh, my family, the Laos family in Pontiac, Michigan. Uh, for the last 21 days since January the 21st, I, my nephew, my great nephew, has came up missing, and there's a search for him. So I'm just praying that uh, safe recoveries for him, and uh, just want our family just to hold on. God has got him. Give us a Amen. word of encouragement and a blessing before we get out of here. In addition, I want to send condolences to the Evans family. We will be uh, finalizing uh, the funeral service tomorrow for the Evans family at Northwest Funeral Home at 1.30. But I want to just encourage those of you who heard today's lesson, continue allow the Lord to speak to your heart. That if you do have questions in your heart for the Lord, come to God correct. Allow him to draw you by his spirit and then ask God your questions and God will answer according to his will. So Lord, we thank you for this lesson today. We pray your word will not return to you void, but it will rest upon the hearts that heard this word and bring a change in the lives of the hearers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Craig, Laws, we love you. We're still searching for Amen. you. God bless you.